Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inflectra's test automation series called Test Automation Demystified. You're joining us for our final webinar in the series, and today's topic is AI in test automation. Today's webinar will be presented by Alexi Grinevich, a senior software developer at Inflectra. Alexi holds a doctorate in applied mathematics and has been working in the IT industry for the past 20 years. For the last 10 years, his major interests is, has been in automated testing, legacy APIs, and desktop system testing. My name is Teresa, and I'll be your moderator today. Just to recap, for those of you that may be joining us for the first time, the Test Automation Demystified is Inflectra's Level 1 Introductory Test Automation webinar series. Its overarching goal is to help aspiring software testers get a better sense of what's involved in test automation, when to use it, what skills to build, and what tools to use. You can learn more about this series by clicking on the URL shown in your handout and also on the screen here. Some of you may also know that Test Automation Demystified is a certificate course. The series participants are eligible to receive a certificate of completion given that they meet the, the webinar attendance and quiz requirements. So if you wish to get a certificate, you'll be asked to take a short quiz after each webinar. But to make things easier for you, we will send out an email that contains all the materials covered in the webinar, including a link to the quiz. Last but not least, please note that each webinar in the series has a practical part. We demonstrate the key practical test automation concepts using Inflectra's own test automation platform, or PEAS. If you haven't yet downloaded the tool, please visit www.inflectra.com slash and take advantage of Inflectra's 30-day free trial. And with all that out of the way, I'll hand it over to Alexi. Thank you, Teresa. My name is Alexi, and let's move on uh, to this last webinar. So today we're going to cover a few topics about uh, AI. So Everyone is now curious about what is AI, how we use AI, what we expect from AI. Uh, lots of things happening around. So we, we see that uh, AI really appears everywhere and somewhere it shows really remarkable results. Uh, so uh, we expect it to be used in test automation. And what we notice is that many users uh, many testers are actually scared by uh, by possible perspective to lose job uh, because they uh, afraid to be replaced by uh, automation by, by robots. So we are going to talk about this particular topic. So we are going to cover cover this topic, and uh, I'll share my thoughts and my found findings on what should we expect and what and when we. We are going to expect it. So, usually, uh, probably you saw some uh, educational topics about uh, a, a artificial intelligence, what is called AI. And in most cases, what you hear in, in this context is something about uh, robotic drivers uh, or uh, automobiles without driver. And uh, moreover, what we currently see from time to time is this great scale. Uh, uh, it's scale uh, intended to show the level of automation of automatic cars from zero to five full automation. Every, every grade has its own explanation, so it's well-developed scale and industry accepts it, and uh, all, uh, all, all available solutions uh, do declare uh, where do they belong in, in this grade. So it's useful, easy to understand scale. So the question is, do we have something similar uh, for the uh, software testing? So this, this scale appeared a bit earlier than uh, we managed to reach level three or level four. So it, it was developed in advance just to see how, 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 uh, how it, the achievements, what achievements do we have in this area? So why uh, do we have something like that for software testing to, to, to know what to expect? So unfortunately, 
there is no such grid available. So let's try to uh, to to make this kind of grid ourselves, uh, or try to make it um, based on some uh, on some comparisons between cars and software testing. So uh, in, in the world of uh, driving, there are several key notions: a car, a vehicle that is moving, uh, a driver. Uh, uh, the person or robot uh, that's responsible of uh, driving the car and controlling it. Uh, the road network, which is very important, uh, the, the place where the car is able to move. Uh, it, it's, it's only, uh, it can only uh, uh, use roads and it shouldn't uh, go be uh, outside of them, right? And finally, uh, two addresses. Uh, so the car is expected to uh, deliver you from point A to point B or from address one to address two. So start, start point and end point are two essential things. So the goal of the car to move you between the, these points. So in software testing world, an analogy for the car is uh, an application, application under test. Uh, driver is the same. So there is a human who is driving. Here is a human who is using or testing an application or robot who is testing, which is compared to robot, robot doing driving uh, things. The road network, it's not, so this mapping is not so explicit. So I, I leave questions here for now and we will uh, clarify it a bit later. And finally, the goal. Uh, the goal here is moving. The goal in software, testing is perform testing. So unclear topic, uh, uh, the, uh, the road network. Uh, so the road network in, in the cars world is a, is, is a combination of all parts that, that uh, together uh, form the, what we understand as modern roads. It's lanes, it's... Uh, uh, bridges, it's signs, it's a uh, markup, it's map, it's crosses, it's lights. So many, many, many things that should be present on regular road uh, so you may safely drive it. And they are present. So and uh, soft, uh, so uh, robotic drivers rely on presence of these things and use it to, to, to navigate, to move to and to, to do all the driving tasks. Uh, in the software testing, uh, there is also the whole infrastructure. So we have, uh, uh, in we may compare lanes uh, to forms in the application and controls within uh, this form that we have to interact with. So we don't click anywhere in application. We, we click to specific places to achieve specific behavior. Uh, road uh, science and map, uh, it's specifications and documentation or any information about software. This is what we use to deal with software or to test the software. And road, road from address one to address two is similar to scenario, to testing scenario. Scenario is intended to, to cover some specific set of tasks and uh, move application from state, from one state to uh, another state. So last thing is the goal, uh, again, move between addresses in cars world and perform testing in, in software world. But what does it mean, perform testing? Okay, uh, we, uh, we used to make some uh, training sessions and where we, uh, we asked users to uh, answer the question, what is the testing? So what's your, what's your explanation for or definition for the word testing? And what was surprising that we, we got really plenty of very different answers. And what was hard is to find any common answer. There are truly a lot of different meanings of this word. Uh, this word is understood uh, completely differently depending on particular situation. So, uh, so the only result that we got from asking this question is that there is no common meaning of the word test, word testing. For example, on this picture is crash testing and it's still valid way of testing something. Why not? So in some cases, this may be important type of testing. In some cases, may be the only needed way of testing. Uh, so when we do testing, perform testing, 
we still have to define what we mean by testing for each particular situation and we do it completely manually so now we want to somehow uh, map current achievements in so in uh, in the world of artificial intelligence and uh, map it in some uh, required work that we all do when we do testing we split this work uh, into uh, four parallel swim lanes. Uh, so there are different types of activities that are usually performed. First is software interaction. It's actually 90% of, or maybe 99% of all efforts when we do in testing. We are clicking, we find an element, we selecting something and comparing values. Time after time, we do it uh, round by round release by release, cycle by cycle. We do it either manually or using some scripting, but this is the majority of actual work and effort that is done. Uh, next is uh, some initial work is scenario creation. We need to write test scenarios, either manual scenarios or automated scenarios. It may be scripts, it may be uh, just a of steps, it may be Excel file, it may be anything, but it, it, it's something that we need to perform to, to finally say that, okay, we did testing because we followed all the scenarios. Uh, next thing is model or specification. Uh, so this is, uh, this our understanding of the software uh, that we codify it in some way. So we know that uh, the software corresponds to our specification. Sometimes specification is just common meaning. So if you have something like uh, pizza ordering application and uh, uh, you, you, you get it and uh, you ask to test it, Usually, what you ask to test, you, you told, okay, this is a pizza ordering application. It, it should be okay for pizza ordering, and that's all. So this means that it should be uh, something like other pizza ordering applications. So you just need to to check that it uh, corresponds to your common meaning of uh, what you imply uh, by what you expect from pizza ordering, uh, like uh, uh, select size select type select delivery pay and uh, and get pizza finally so change your money for uh for pizza uh, uh last swim line is goals or targets uh here we define how much do we want to test when do we stop and finally we have test results we have uh, something passed something failed something behaving somehow uh, unusually. So uh, how do we treat this information? Uh, do we finally decide that product is okay for delivery or for deployment, or this is no go situation, we should uh, cancel it, we, we, we should uh, fix some uh, critical issues before being, uh, we are ready for final de delivery. So this is also the task that needs to be done. This is done all the time, and uh, this is something that needs to be addressed. So for each swim line, we have four of them. Uh, we identify current status of the industry. So what kind of solutions we have to solve specific tasks. No AI means it's completely manual and uh, hardly automated uh partial ai means it may be scripted somehow or there are some solutions that help to really uh, speed up uh doing the, these things uh and full ai means uh, software may completely decide what to do so you don't need to but to bother about it so it may uh, be done without human at all so swim line one is uh finding controls on the screen. This is the most well-developed lane, and this is where most efforts on uh, testing automation are now put on. So we, we hardly work, we in Inflectra, uh, other vendors to, to make this as much automated as possible. So we 
now assume that industry level in in this direction is uh, at least partial uh, AI, and we really expect that it moves towards uh, full AI. We see some technologies, we see some solutions, we have some of them, uh, we also develop in some of them. So this is where we have, uh, uh, we, we, we foresee uh, uh, the most dramatic progress in the nearest future or midterm future. Uh, so it's illustration is, a difference between uh, white box testing and black box testing. This is also sometimes a key uh, key thing that uh, that that prevents uh, uh, software from interacting. So in first uh, in first picture, uh, this robot uh, controls the car from inside. So it uses regular controls to be able to move. So it's like driver with uh, with standard interface. On the second picture, the uh, the, the robot cannot get in, so it has to uh, control this car from outside. So it's like a black box testing. You still need to drive, but you you are outside. You need to do something special. And we we still see such situation in in every day's world when we uh, when we uh, work with uh, software testing. Uh, second uh, swim lane is uh, scenario creation. Uh, so it's uh, so if, if, even if we automate it, we may think, okay, we automate it. Just let's do everything. Just let's go uh, uh, all, all the ways. Let's insert all the values in all input controls, and so on and so forth and so forth. Uh, it looks like a reasonable approach since we have uh, computer power to help us. In reality, unfortunately, uh, the, the amount of possible inputs is so huge that it's completely, even for simple uh, mobile applications, completely impossible to uh, to enter all the combinations. So we have to choose which are more important, which are less important. So look at this door. So we suppose we uh, we expected to test it. Okay, what do we do? We test this locker. Locker is okay. We cast uh, the handle. It's okay. We may check that it may be opened in two parts and has uh, enough width to to let something to go through. That's fine. We may check windows. We may check its uh, width. We may check uh, that it opens without sound. So many things we may verify here, and we may say, okay, the door is okay, uh, and this door will be okay unless. Uh, we try to just move through this door and uh, close it after we moved inside. In this case, we probably will have a problem because there is a wall inside it. So when we test it manually, we see it and we see that it's first priority things to, to check. So if we expect some automation, uh, we expect automation to do such reasonable thing. We don't need to check this locker. Locker is not needed because there is nowhere to go inside. So we probably it's better check that there is some room inside this door. So it's just an illustration. So selecting scenarios is something that needs some more attention. Uh, we assume that currently uh, the state of the art on this swim line is between no AI and some partial AI. Some generation of scenarios is possible, but it's hard from something sophisticated or complete. Swim lane three, is model. Uh, what is model? Uh, model is uh, some kind of description of the software and uh, that description that uh, should be used to understand if software is actually doing what it is intended to do or it's missing some uh, crucial essential functionality that, uh, that, that, that must be here but it's not here. Uh, again, this current state of the art is uh, from no AI to partial AI. Good example, for example, is payroll application, where you need to, uh, application needs to calculate uh, salaries and taxes, right? So what is model? You need to, 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 to have some formulas to, if you have a person with all its data, uh, you need to be able to, uh, uh, calculate what salary he gets, what taxes he pays, and uh, make the bills, make the checks. 
uh, according to the available set of laws, regulations, uh, or other rules, which are specified in in some documents, uh, uh, and 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 so on and so forth. So uh, once you have this model, you have something to compare. What we see in the reality, what happens now, if you, you do in payroll, you probably will uh, have to uh, order some expert, some buy some time from the uh, expert, from accountant, who will uh, do the same manually and compare uh, to what your software is calculating, because it's important to calculate everything correctly. Uh, so this person has this model of the tax structure in his mind, but uh, a codified version of that is still needs some manual work to, do, to, be, to be created. So this is, again, thing that needs to be created automatically in the future, but current state is between nothing to very partial uh, artificial intelligence level. And uh, final thing is uh, goals and criteria. So, uh, this is where we say, okay, this software is okay, this application is fine, or no, this application is not fine because because this, this, this is broken and this might must be valid. So again, another another level of another goal is how how much we test, how deeply we test, how thoroughly we then we should stop testing, or what is uh what is the trade-off between, between proceeding test or delivering it earlier? So it's all about, this, this is a decision process and it's also part of the testing. And currently we may state that it's status between uh, closer to no AI with very, very, very limited uh, appearance of AI. Sometimes we may decide. So if, if for some cases we may, then software is simple, or when its goal is simple, we, we may know that its primary goal is to keep bandwidth, so we need to test bandwidth, or we need to, uh, for space application, we should have 100% code coverage, we have 99% fault tolerance, and so on and so forth. So in very limited cases, there are some methods which are very expensive, do exist, but otherwise, uh, mostly status is no artificial intelligence. So based on, on this understanding, uh, here is my proposed sort of module for uh, measuring the grades of artificial intelligence. Level one is manual, not no AI at all. Uh, level two is partial, where uh, we may automate to some extent uh, different tasks belonging to different swim lines. So swim lines are columns in this table. Uh, level three is when we are able to at least partially automate first three swim lines, th uh, swim lanes. So at this level, may, we may say that we are really close to, to, uh, to, to the final goal. And final goal is level four. And uh, another Explanation for this level four is automated exploratory testing. So when you uh, have a pizza up, you have a robot, you, you, you give uh, this application to robot and all you say, you don't, uh, you don't write scripts, you don't do explanation, just check that pizza application is okay. And this robot creates model. It checks other pizza applications in the internet. Uh, it reads something about pizza, how how pizza should look. Uh, it looks at your application. It makes test scenario. It executes and it gives you some sort of report that your application is fine, or it's it's okay, but your uh, your, your pizza selection is broken because only only one size is possible to select, and so on and so forth. So this is level four. So uh, before we go in uh, further, uh, it's good to look at what we actually have in the world of uh, AI and software testing. So I checked several. Uh, not uh, many different tools that do declare we have 
artificial intelligence and we are focused on intelligence and we do software testing so this is major tool vendors some of them are just startups who are completely ai based so they they declare everything around their eye uh and so the first row the first column here is from nature language is where you express your requirements in some very common way without scripting without uh without any diagrams just at very high level and it's able to convert us these to test scenarios uh next uh three rows is about different ways on how to locate an element on the screen and how to check it and how to fix if application changed and you still need to locate the same element so this is about interaction so all all these three are about interaction with software it's swimline one uh you may see that some solutions do declare they have like more checks here so they move further these are actually uh solutions who declare their ai they may have ai in their name uh in most cases when you see something like that so this is what we get from their uh, white papers and from their reports uh and this is something that is really hard to try or see so we have to believe they have it uh and we have to be skeptical because they just got funding for it and uh we still have to uh, to wait to see real results from what they do uh but since they declare we mark it here uh so most well uh, established thing is self healing locators uh we 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 also have it in rupees and we think this is the most important part from from all this uh, set of rows and uh, as for monkey testing it's something closer to random testing it's well known method for uh at least last 40 years so some tools uh claim that they just reinvented it but it's it's also no it's already well known approach and uh it has known benefits and drawbacks so i i wouldn't tell it it is something breaking through it's it has its own problems and it, they are not yet resolved so where are we now uh, from what i said before i see that we are currently somewhere at level two. Industry is currently at level two with some uh, some movements towards level three, mostly due to this all new startup and achievements done through last uh, two, three years. Uh, this level two is not, uh, is, is mostly level two, so we are still far from level three and if we talk about some expectation uh i would say that we should expect uh, level three to be complete uh, within next maybe five to ten years and uh it's and it's not going to be 100 percent complete but we should see at this point we may say that the industry is more at level three than at level two uh now a few words about rupees so we we also developing different solutions we're doing a lot of work just let's quickly look under the hood what we have and so the idea of ai is that you don't see the ai so you when you work with the tool it just helps you and the things that are broken normally are working uh, in in your case so you don't have troubles uh, uh so it works so you don't see any issues means that ai is working properly so Rupees has, first of all, uh, uh, some sophisticated element recognition and self-healing uh, features. Uh, next, we are doing uh, analysis of uh, sites from most, episodes, most 500 list. And we also include uh, some other sites to this list. We see how they these uh, sites are changing over time we uh, identify patterns 
uh, that are common for changing application. We identify some trends, trends in web application design, and we try to use this information in RPS uh, to improve the quality of element recognition. So one more technology that is derived from this is web profiles. So we use information collected here and to build the better web profiles and thus to further improve this element uh, recovery and self-healing. So this whole set of things around rupees. So, okay, we talked about label three. Answer to label three, when? Maybe in 10 years, maybe to some extent. When is level four? When we are all fired? Very good question. And before uh, I will try to give my answer to that, uh, I, I would uh, like to give you some insight uh, from, the, from the other uh, industries. So trains, the first example. So first completely, uh, first automated uh, train line uh, appeared in 1967 and uh, it was a london underground line for the trains uh, we have grades of automation which are similar to cars from zero to four and the uh, uh, current status is there are many lines uh, with grades of automation from zero to three and few lines appeared just last few years uh, uh, having label four Label four is also full automation. When train looks like that, this is Copenhagen Metro, no driver at all. So all the Metro line is completely automatic, no humans around. So it started in 67, when there is, uh, then the software, then the computers were very weak and uh, it developed really fast. So currently uh, it's well developed. It, start, it, it has been developed before appearance of things like uh, machine learning uh, or before these things became really uh, industrial things. So this kind of automation doesn't require uh, uh, new technologies, computer vision and so on. And it works, it works perfectly. Another good example is uh, autopilot. So uh, this, the, this picture is from the magazine, which was published in 1930. Uh, it's going to be about 90 years ago when the first autopilot pilot, uh, piloted flight happened, actually. And be, uh, what would you think if you now go back to 1930 and uh, look uh, by eyes of human of that, of that period? So it was looking like it's very close when uh, then planes will be uh, completely automatic. Then everything around the airlines will be 100% automatic. But since then, we may see that uh, plane operation uh, still requires a crew and crew is more than one, more than one pilot for airlines. Uh, and we still have accidents and in, we have many accidents where human help to recover. Although there are a lot of supporting systems, uh, autopilot, auto landing, and so on and so on. Uh, I published an article describing many things that I uh, explained today in much more details. So you may uh, you will get a link. So may, you may go there if you're interested and, and read more. So in 1913, it was about to appear. And today in 2019, it's still about to appear. So uh, sometimes you need to stay calm and the problem is harder than it looks. Uh, another thing that affects the effectiveness of, of the automation is infrastructure. Uh, so for autopilots, uh, so current, current piloting system do rely on many things starting from GPS uh, or other navigations and on the equipment install, installed in the planes and into the airport. Uh, so when uh, the, the, the plane may do automatic landing, but it requires the airport to contain special special system. This is Kate 3 b uh, or L auto land. And in this case, it's able to land in automatic mode if everything is working okay. 
but its system still appears and there are still tasks that are not automated like taxi on on on, on the ground so there are still many things to do here uh, also usually uh, our expectations are incorrect uh, the demand uh, so we expect something to 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 to, to change but the demand changes. So while we're thinking about cars, things like Uber appears, the style the, and the way how we use cars uh, changes. Many, pe many people stop using cars. They prefer like uh, bikes or other ways and public transportation that be becoming more and more popular or Uber uh, or high-speed trains. That in many, in some cases where there is high-speed train line uh, between big cities in Europe and Japan, uh, uh, they completely they, they 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 help to replace airlines at all, because train is more comfortable than airline, to, due to many reasons. Now let's think about software and how how it's similar to software we also see the infrastructural changes appearing uh, these days so we see that uh, now now today's trend is quick delivery shorter releases uh, software this way software is more uh, flexible moreover uh, uh, bigger auditory quicker releases helps uh, vendors to sometimes keep testing uh, by uh, making releases for smaller groups of users so or making sort of a b testing of, of some features so uh, this way users uh, used uh, uh, as better you uh, as better tester and sometimes they don't even know about that so it's sort of cheating but this happens in today's life uh, microservice are, are architecture or distributed architecture. In, in, with, with this architecture, you uh, you have uh, more parallel, more distributed software, and its essential uh, feature is it's more flaky. Uh, it sometimes uh, may have uh, delays, or sometimes it may have some internal errors. Uh, but uh, this becomes a common design, and we need to we still have to live with that. So uh, this is again something that's changing overall. It's changing everywhere, and we need to live with that. Uh, another thing is accessibility standards, uh, where software needs to follow some standards, and these standards, uh, like I accessible or area or UI automation, do help to do testing and validation. They they are really helpful for automated testing. So all these things are happening, and we don't know uh, where this will uh, be in like 10 years. So this is uh, this is going to this happening in parallel with changing the the world. So uh, in this case, we need to be adoptive. Uh, we need to be adoptive to change in infrastructure. We need to to uh, to be adoptive to this trend of shorter release cycles and to appear in uh, parts of AI. So primary focus is not to expect AI, uh, but to to uh, to to work with change in infrastructure. You need better tools uh, uh, to work with changing world. You may need to better more integrated tools to be able to be do quicker releases to know what you uh, need to do in these cases, what uh, what to do if some trouble appears, how to roll back, how to redeploy and everything like that. So that's why in Flectra, we, we as a vendor, we provide uh, the solution that is more integrated. It has everything starting from application lifetime management, test management, and actually test execution software. So this is the key, uh, key for today's success. So if we talk about level four and when level four, when is it to expect? I would refer to Sir Anthony Hoare. Uh, this is inventor of null pointer, quick sort. Uh, he, he is some, if you if you ever studied computer science, you would hear uh, about Hoare monitor. So many things actually, many great things uh, uh, that he developed. And recently he introduced uh, a, uh, a work, it's a global challenge, and uh, 
uh, it, it, he called it the verifying compiler. This is a grand challenge for computer research. The grand challenge means something for for many, many, many years, and this is some kind of goal, like landing on the moon, that 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 we may move towards, and but that we may see when it is done. And it's not something to be done in two, one, two years or so. So uh, it's not exactly the same as uh, uh, exploratory testing, but uh, exploratory testing is a part of this task because if this grand challenge uh, is, uh, is if we got there then we have software that doesn't need testing so the idea is to remove not only testers but both testers and who find bugs and developers who de who create those bugs so this is the best way to uh, to to make perfect programs and I, I, one day I was on the lecture of uh, Sir Anthony, and so uh, it was about 2005. Uh, he was introducing this idea, and I asked, uh, "So when when would you expect? So any do you have any estimates of when this should happen?" Uh, and he said, "Okay, I would. It, it would not be a big mistake if I said uh, it will happen 50 years from now." So it was 2005, uh, we had 50 years. So estimate is 2055. So this is my, now it's my estimate uh, for, for uh, uh, the level four in, uh, in AI and software uh, automation. Uh, I trust, why I trust to this estimate? Because Sir Anthony, uh, he's not involved in machine learning, deep learning, on all other buzzwords that you hear around. Uh, he didn't take any grants for that or didn't raise funds for, for, for talking about that word. So he more or less independent expert in this area. So in this case, this, ex uh, uh, this estimate is, is more reliable than uh, other that you may see. And uh, okay. Still level three, still level three, what should we do about it? So how, how, how should we behave? And uh, uh, still, uh, I think we sh uh, I would recommend to stay calm because if you may see uh, this uh, retrofuturistic picture, this is how uh, the pointer from the past uh, expected uh, the future to look like. So this lady uh, need to make some makeup and she has a set of instruments for that. And like uh, now from the future point of view, uh, let's look at this picture and uh, see how, how actually it's implemented these days. Uh, uh, we don't need all, we don't have all these handles, all these uh, uh, mirrors, all these buttons. Basically, all things that you see on this picture are currently implemented in your phone as a Photoshop. That so you you doing Photoshop of your picture and you're getting what this lady is trying to do. So this is how it actually looks from today's point of view. Or another good picture is uh, this uh, illustration to uh, science fiction. Uh, so you may see that uh, some happening in something like uh, uh, this guy is trying to purchase like a ticket from 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 this lady, and she has really sophisticated PC with you see with paper, so it's like it's some combination of writing machine. She has uh, some very modern monitor with handles. Uh, she has some old printing device. So if we look again, we look at this uh, uh, from today's point of view, what we can see is that uh, uh, we already don't have such kind of PCs. We don't need these printing devices. When you need to purchase a ticket, you don't need this lady. You don't need this, uh, all this room at all. Uh, moreover, you don't need papers in many cases. So you may just purchase it online. So this kind of ticket is not needed. So all these already don't exist, but there is still no robot of such kind. So no robots that are uh, walking among us and doing the same things that we do. 
So things that appear to be more usual to this writer uh, don't yet exist, and things that appear to be essential to this uh, to this uh, artist uh, are already not needed. Okay, I would stop at this point. Uh, I think uh, the idea, I hope my idea I tried to tell you is clear. And uh, if, if it's not, I hope I, you will find the article uh, which explains what I was trying to say today uh, in more details. You, find, you, will find it more, you will find it interesting and useful. It has more examples, more explanations. So it's, if it's topic interesting for you, you, I hope you will find it. All right. Uh, well, thank you again, Alexi, for the presentation. And we thank you for joining us for this wrap up to our webinar series. Thanks, everyone.